Hey guys, Scanner Danner here, doing some RV maintenance and repair today. Something a little different. Uh, we're getting ready for a trip. Taking this rig behind me, and I was doing an oil change on it, and I noticed I had something broken, a connector on the side of the block. Let me show it to you. All right, so I was changing my my oil, oil filter, and my coolant filters. And uh, you see a, a plug that I've temporarily put in the water jacket right there. Um, the piece that came out of it was a temp sensor. And the connector was broken in half. So I'm looking at this connector. Of course, I unplugged the broken half of the sensor. And I'm wondering what it's for. So I want to show you guys what I did. Just took a jumper wire. And by the way, this has been broken for a long time. I really think... It maybe was uh, broken the entire time I've owned this rig, but this is a temperature sensor of some type. Again, it's in a water jacket, so I'm jumping the two together. So it's a coolant temperature switch that controls it's basically an overheat light is what it is and uh, not typical that they would use a two pin for this let me unplug it you watch the light go out so now I at least know what I'm dealing with and again the location of that right on the side of the block so now we got to find what kind of part is this what temperature switch is it and I need to find a replacement so what I saw when I was changing my oil filter is this thing was staring at me and it was just laying there. So it was plugged into the electrical uh, connection still and it was looking at me like that, just kind of hanging down. I was like, great. Didn't even uh, know that this was broken. That high temperature light that you guys saw me set, I've never seen that light before. That's a good thing, um, but not a good thing if this high temp sensor or switch has been broken so I really taking this trip um, I do have a water temp gauge that still works but the manufacturer of the RV felt it necessary to put a high temperature switch to and I, I like it it's a another redundant piece that I can rely on as far as uh, temperature uh, monitoring goes and uh, I want to fix it so I started, um, oh, before we talk about the search, this is the piece that was still left in the block. And right now, you guys saw in that last clip, I got that black plastic half inch pipe thread uh, plug just in there to keep the coolant from draining out. But this was still in the block, broken. You see the aluminum housing split apart and uh, that's what ruined this switch. So uh, internal to this, Right, just an on-off switch. And so I started trying to find this part. It's made by a medallion. It's an alarm stat. And the number on this switch was a 1002-07988. And so um, I assumed that this was uh, a Cummins part, and it is not. Uh, this was installed by the manufacturer of the gauges. And so trying to locate this part, um, I found some... Uh, with the same part number anywhere from 150 to 250 dollars for this part and uh, we're, again we're getting ready to leave so I need to replace this now and uh, then I found with further research that there's a bunch of different temperature ratings for this there's two more digits after this number after this 07988 number there's two more digits that do not exist on this so these go anywhere from 185 degrees all the way up to 250 degrees depending on those last two numbers so I didn't know what I was dealing with and um, I got uh, on the phone with a parts guy and I have to give this company props this is uh, Kenworth of Pennsylvania they're in New Stanton they have a couple different stores in the Pittsburgh area but Kenworth of Pennsylvania and this is the new Stanton office and the parts guy that I talked to it was he's the parts manager his name is Bruce and he was awesome I mean he back and forth emails all day trying to locate me a switch that would work for this 
and uh, what he suggested I do is unbolt the body from the block and I did uh, to find out a temperature uh, number and you know I assumed that it would be at least 230 degrees and I was absolutely shocked to find that it's listed as 215 this is a 215 degree temperature switch and by the way this is typically used this particular device is typically used to control a cooling fan and for whatever reason the manufacturer of the RV decided to use this for the the um, idiot light or the overheat light um, but it was it was difficult for me to locate this part because one I didn't know the temperature rating at first uh, for our cars 230 degrees is when a cooling fan turns on on a lot of our systems and so I figured man for an overheat condition this has to be at least 230 degrees or higher I was thinking 240 or 250 shocked to find this be a 215 degree temp switch um, I know when I was in Arizona last year 110 degree temperatures the most I saw on my rig was uh, was 200 so um, you know we're gonna go with 215 and I at least now know that if I see this overheat light go off that it's not smoking hot so I, I like knowing that I have a lower number in there and we'll see how it goes uh, I believe this thing's been broken the whole time I've owned this rig so uh, but here's the here's the deal right can't find this part can't locate it but I did get a 215 degree 215 normally open contact that was a an issue too it needed to be normally open but um, Bruce from Kenworth found me this part and it was like fifty dollars fifty nine dollars to be exact and it's a single wire single wire normally open switch so it's going to be grounded to the housing and so what I need to do is I need to modify my circuit and make it match this one now the the key is going to be which one of those two wires that I jumped is going to ground and which one of the two wires goes to the gauge I should be able to do this now granted it's not a weather pack connector um, I'll take some steps in regards to insulating this but again it's just an idiot light uh, I'm okay with uh, with this modification that I'm doing I mean, what are my choices I'm going on a trip here tomorrow and uh, I can't get this part anyway and I located a 215 degree temp switch it'll thread right in same pipe diameter and uh, so the rest of this let's figure out which of the two wires is for the gauge and which of the two wires is a ground and then we'll cut the connector wire this in and then be good to go so this time instead of jumping them together we'll do them one at a time to the block we could do voltage measurements too but I'm just trying to keep this low tech no reason to go crazy here right so that's going to the block now that's the wire to the right so I got lucky it was the first one uh, this isn't necessary I now know which of the two wires I'm gonna use but I'm gonna show you jumping the other side too just because so I'm now in the left terminal so we've answered a lot of questions. Number one, we know that this switch, it's for an overheat light, that's it. Uh, two, we know that the manufacturer used a 215 degree temperature switch. I feel like that's low, but I'm not a diesel guy, I'm an auto guy, and again, 230 on cars is when we turn our cooling fans on on a lot of systems. 220 on average, 230 on some. So 215 as an overheat seems low to me. But I'm not a diesel guy. I'm new to the rigs. That's what they're using. That's what I'm going to put back in it. Uh, what else we answered here is that one of the two wires goes to a ground and the other wire goes to the light. Now it was possible that there were two different circuits that were being grounded at the same time that would ground to the housing of that switch. It's not the case. We can do some uh, resistance measurements too, but it's not necessary. 
uh, that is how this is working. There isn't two wires I need to worry about. Just the one on the right side of the connector as we're looking at it. Cut that wire and we'll adapt another circuit to it for our new uh, sending unit or switch. That's all it is. It's an overheat light. It's just added safety while I'm on the road. Let's say um, the water pump fails and maybe before my temperature gauge would climb, my overheat light would sw uh, switch would trip and give me a warning of that and then I can protect my engine. So that's my thought process behind it. What if I have an overheat condition that is delayed on the water temperature gauge because honestly I don't even know where that is. I don't know where they put the water temp gauge. So that would maybe dictate um, whether or not this repair was even necessary but I'm a little bit anal. I want everything to work like it's supposed to and having an extra warning device is a good thing. So let's get this thing put back together. Do this out here where it's a lot easier. We're going to solder this too. thought about even soldering it to the end of this but we'll be okay not doing that leave that piece this washer on the bottom give it kind of somewhere to sit terminal this is a little bit a little bit bigger than I want but it's just what I have laying around in the garage and we're gonna do a 90 on that too solder it first then I'm gonna bend this 90 degrees I don't have any flux but this is a rosin core solder so it has it in it uh, I found it useful to put a little puddle underneath where you're soldering and then that helps transfer the heat energy very very quickly there you go a little extra solder there just kind of tap it while it's hot it's good to go I want to be careful not to over tighten this I'm using a really big quarter inch ratchet just got to be careful. This is brass. And I definitely, definitely do not want to over tighten that. Okay. And then I think the final thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bend this up. So you guys can see the layout there. piece of heat shrink tubing hopefully it's big enough to go over top of this Too much coffee this morning. Can't hold my hand still.
This is the good heat shrink too. You see the uh, the uh, epoxy or the sealant coming out of the end of that. All right. Now, that's pretty weather tight. I'm happy about that. Do one more connection up inside. Thread this into the block. Be good to go. All right, boys and girls. We're doing something. Just for the camera, what we're going to do is I rig this up to where I'm going to ground the housing of it here and I have the signal wire going to my sensor and we're going to boil some water. Except can I get it to 215? <laughs> That's the thing I did not consider. I can only get it to 212. This is not gonna work. So I just rigged up a little experiment here and um, unfortunately because of physics I can only get this up to 212. Oh, let's try it. What the heck? What do we got to lose? Thermometers off a little bit. All right guys, so not the greatest experiment. I was hoping at 215 that I could do it with water, that maybe it'd be a few degrees off, but I could not trip it at 212 with the water boiling. My thermometer's off a little bit here. You saw I just heated it up with a torch and uh, I was able to bing the light, so I'm comfortable putting this together the way, way we're doing it. All right, to be honest with you, I don't even know why I'm filming this part, because I'm about to get coolant all down my back. down my back just like last time right down my armpit and on my back well we didn't lose much love laying in antifreeze this uh switch already had some pipe sealant on it too which I think is really more of a lubricant than anything I apologize if these are not the greatest camera shots here and what I'm doing this wiring on these RVs ridiculous there's another connector right here really struggling with this camera work here guys sorry there's another connector sitting here that was never plugged into anything um if you guys know anything about these rvs man the the wiring is so sketchy on these 
I mean, they just throw these things together. All right, remember, it was the right pin on this. I'm just leaving the rest of this hang. I'll cut it back a little bit in case I ever want to reuse that. As far as worrying about this corroding, this is just a ground wire on this side. I'm not worried about that at all. As you can see, another connector just kind of hanging there. We'll just leave that alone. Strip this back and connect it to our, our new switch. It's a little bit hard to work with. It should have left that, that wire longer. Oh my goodness. That was so hard to do. Using a heat shrink butt connector. Again, this is the good kind that has the sealant inside of it. Thanks for a nice weather tight seal. One newly installed overheat temp switch. Before I forget, here's the part number I used for anybody else that wants to repair their rig in the way that I did. Okay, you don't want to forget to top off your antifreeze when you're done, so let's start this thing up and go back and fill it back up. that light again. guys while we're done coolant is topped off everything looks good a uh, couple of final things one I'm surprised that 215 degrees is considered an overheat on this rig uh, definitely not on a car like I said cooling fans on most of our cars are 220 to 230 in fact I've read some articles that talk about the the gasoline engine um, having the best optimized burn at 220 degrees so anyway I put back in what came out which was a 215 degree switch for this overheat light so hopefully you guys found this video useful those of you that are RVers that do-it-yourself RVers will definitely appreciate this you guys can check in the description of this video for uh, the part that I used and any other information that's pertaining to this repair including tools you'll also find some related video links in the description as well which would be other repairs I've done to this RV and uh, this particular model this is a 2001 American tradition and it is on a Spartan chassis with an 8.3 liter Cummins engine so again thanks for joining me guys I'll see you next time